Hi, and welcome to another painting process video. Hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on The Simpsons Television Show. I've been working on the show for over 25 years now, and I'm here to empower you. So today I'm going to try a little bit something different. So you're going to see me approach this in a very different way, and then I talk about it specifically in the video. Uh, but I did learn a lot of things, and I actually learned specifically uh, what I really want to get out of these kinds of postcard images at this point in time. One of my biggest influences is um, now that I've uh, seen what the um, kind of the computer AI uh, images tend to look like and what they can do, uh, I think that traditional art has become much more viable, much more interesting, because uh, one thing is that you can see somebody actually do it in real time on an actual physical thing. And another thing is that it, it, uh, it is very different than any kind of digital image, right? It's, it, it's tactile, it's, it's practical, it's, it's physical, it's, it, it's an actual item. So here is the process of actually creating an actual physical piece of uh, physical image. And I hope uh, you, you get a lot out of it because uh, I hope that doing this will help you also do this yourself and try it and experiment yourself because it's worth doing. All right, without any further ado, here we go. Okay, so I decided I'm gonna, I was gonna try something different this time. So uh, uh, rather than uh, just add the shadows first, like I tend to, I was going to just start adding a bunch of gradients and trying to make it as colorful as I possibly could. And in order to make the gradients, I needed to wet the heck out of the, the, um, the paper so that it all kind of blended together. So uh, very, very wet on wet here, um, just adding blotches and trying to get the colors to just come together and just blend and um, make it look watercolor-esque, right? So here's some water, I'm adding water here and there's going to just, uh, all of this is just <clears throat> kind of putting in a light gradient throughout. And then after that, uh, it needed to dry before I started putting in the shadows. So uh, this was the preliminary idea. This was the, the idea of, from the start, was just to try to, and here I am drying the, the, the paint because I can't do anything <laughs> until it's dry. So this took a while, as you can see, just uh, I had a hair dryer and I just dried it. And once it was dry, <clears throat> I started adding uh, local color. So very quickly just adding local color and very uh, generally kind of sloppy, but it was just local color. And again, it wasn't any, I didn't put any shadows in it. So it looked kind of awful. Uh, like I said, this is not the way I tend, tend to do stuff. Now, now I'm adding the shadows and I'm adding the darkest areas uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and really finessing what I've got here. So uh, it, it was interesting because, uh, like I said, this is not something that I tend to do. This, is, this, is, this was a little bit out of my comfort zone. Uh, I did, with the line drawing, um, map out where the shadows would be. And the line drawing still was visible throughout the process, which helped guide where I'm going to put the shadows and where I'm not. So that was also very helpful. But at this point, I was, uh, I, this is where I was really doing what I tend to do, which is add the shadows. But, um, and, and I just kept on adding more blue and more uh, brown. And the more blue and more brown you get together, it becomes blacker and blacker. So here I am adding more dark. So one of the things that, uh, that this process helped me uh, see is that um, uh, as much as I, I, I ended up liking 
uh, overall the the way that this turned out uh, I kind of missed the cartoony I mean as I did exaggerate this and made it as cartoony as I could but it was too painterly I think I, I it, it's okay for it to be painterly but I I wanted it, it, it at the end I was like you know I, I, I still kind of want this to be a cartoon looking drawing that is colored so and because I didn't really add a lot of lines to this and I didn't outline it the way I have been um, I kind of missed it I kind of was like ah, this is much too much like a painting and not enough like a like a drawing so I think that uh, moving moving forward going going forward I'm going to do the outline again like I did in the last couple and and then just go in and kind of do this process again with the with the with the gradients and the and the wet on wet and all that stuff but with lines there and and i think that that um that by doing that it's going to to give it a more cartoon look which is something that i kind of want I, I really just like that look i i just like it this is this is not a bad look but this isn't the 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 direction I, I kind of want this stuff to go. But I but I do like that this turned out okay. Like like I'm I'm trying really hard here to like add edges and add lines. Uh, just with the watercolor. But as you can see, it um, it, it doesn't have the same flavor. It doesn't have the same same look it's it's very painterly and it turned out fine i don't, i'm not saying i dislike it but i just it isn't it isn't what i wanted to do but i really liked the process i thought that this was really interesting and it really played up the watercolor um the watercolor what the strengths of the watercolor right that this is the chaos of watercolor uh, is is part of its beauty, and um, one of the benefits of watercolor is that it's it's not uh, reproducible. In in that, um, if you 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 know you take a master painting uh, with an oil painting, and here I am actually putting in lines, but I did it very very lightly, just in, in very judicious areas. But anyway, um, a oil painting uh, you can very much mimic almost stroke for stroke. Um, uh, uh, an oil painting but because of the chaos of watercolor um, you can't do that with watercolor you can do that with tempura paints and you can do that with uh, acrylic paints you can kind of mimic and, and almost duplicate stroke for stroke a, a painting but you can't do that with watercolor because of the chaotic nature um, especially if it's a very loose watercolor um, Maybe if you have a very tight watercolor, you might be able to produce um, a duplicate, but uh, a loose one, you can't. So um, that's it. I was really softening stuff up, but I, I actually really like the way this turned out, and I think I'm going to try it again. But again, uh, more cartoony, more cartoony. I really want this to, to feel like a drawing that is colored rather than too much of a, of a, of a watercolor painting um, there's something I really love about the cartoony look of things so this was the process this time around I just went in with uh, gradients and lights first and then added the 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 dark and the shadows uh, at the uh, later on which which um, it, it's usually not my, my process but um, it's it's worth it's worth giving it a try it's worth uh, doing all right so i hope you got uh something out of this that i sure didn't I? see you next time so i'm happy to announce that i now have a new drawing lesson called drafu guide to sketching and gesture foundations it's the beginning of the level two information that people have been asking me for for the drawing website which will teach you where to start drawing what to draw what to draw when you draw, 
how to draw from observation, how to draw from imagination, how to draw what you envision, and how to discover what you ought to envision if you don't have anything specific in mind. So if you find any of this interesting, you could follow the link that you see, or you can go to thedrawingwebsite.com, look under level two, and you'll find a link there.